Hi, my name is Sherry. Welcome to my stamp studio. So before I get going on today's cards, I wanted to mention a couple of things to you. One, I've been a little bit slow on the videos because I've been working on the Triad class. So those of you that signed up to take it, excuse me, my allergies, um, well, should be getting it in the mail. I should get it out in the mail the middle of next week. I'm waiting for my second shipment to get all of the rest of the ribbon and everything. Um, all of the other embellishments that need to go in it. It should be here the middle of next week. So once I get the packets together, I should be good. I have one more video to film and then you should be getting those. So once I have the packets ready, then I will send it, the the online portion to all of you. So if you, I wish you could all see the cards. They are so stinking adorable. So I did want to let you know that there is an online, I have that part up, an online PDF version available as well. And that can be, but anybody in the world can get that. I can only send product to people who live in the U.S. But it doesn't matter where in the world that you live, you can do the online portion. And if you do the online portion, you get the PDF brochure and it's a booklet and this time I'm giving you my sketches which is kind of cool so you'll see how I sketch out my designs before I do them and then you also get like the measurements and how to put the card together so you'll be able to use that always in the future for all 10 cards so you'll have 10 card patterns that you can always use and adapt in the future and then it has the pictures of all the projects so that is a brochure and then you'll get all 10 videos so there's I think there are are four videos, two that each have three and two that have two. So if you do just the online portion, then you can buy your own product and follow along. And in addition, in each of the videos, each of them follows a paper and their matching ribbon and their matching embellishments. So you get to see all of that try it stuff, even though you don't have it all, <clears throat> you get to see it up close. So the online portion you can sign up for that now and I will put a link down below this video or on Facebook wherever you're watching it in my next email wherever you're seeing that there will be a link so you can do the online then when I get the next shipment in next week I will have a few extra spots and so I will open it back up to take those last few spots I don't know um, how many there will be not many six eight maybe so you'll have to snag them up right away i may do like one far away picture because i wish you could see the cards but that is a perk of being in the class so i'm not going to let y'all see them if you're not in the class but maybe a far away picture they're so cute so so cute it's a steal so you'll want to do the class and once i open it back up i expect they'll go fairly quickly so you'll want to snag a spot as soon as you can and we're on vacation until um the end of june at we, go, we leave next week, so I'll open that back up, and then those will mail out in early July. So I did want to let you know that. And then the Zoo Globe is part of our Stampin' Safari class that is at the end of July, and there's details for that. So that's part of the reason I was using that set. In that class, you do get the Zoo Globe, the Hippos, and the Camo, which I'm going to use the Camo today, too. And we have portions of this class where you get all of the product where you can just do the class or if you're a demonstrator you can just do how to do the class class so there's three different versions of that that you can see too and the link for that will be down below so let's get going on the card it's pretty quick this is not a card that you will make if you are in the stamp and safari class but i was just playing with it and it does go with the snow globe that was in last year's holiday catalog I'm not going to use that today. And we're going to use magenta, which I haven't used a lot of yet. It's a very summer color. It's very hot pink. So I have a piece of the magenta cardstock. Just fold that in half. It's going to be our card base. So pretty. It's very um, 1980s to me. Makes me want to put my hair up in a perm and a scrunchie. So then I have some shimmering white cardstock. So I have a little scrap piece here. And then this is going to be the piece that we're going to stamp our snow globe on. And then this is going to be for our camo. So let's start with the snow globe base. I'm going to give you a tip. You can see I don't have the globe mounted yet. I'm just going to use Memento. You could do this with blends. And I did it the first time at my um, friend's house when we were all stamping together. So the first time I used her set. 
and I used the watercolor pencils. And so then I thought about switching over to the blends when I remade it because the magenta blend is to die for. It's so, so cute. But I like the water painters and I haven't used them yet with the watercolor pencils to show you. So I thought I'd go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we have the base. Now I can't tell you the number of cards I saw at Christmas time online where people had done the snow globe and it was wonky. You don't want a wonky snow globe because you don't, or a, a little zoo globe here. You want it to look round. And what happens is, if I can get this out of here. You know, this piece right here is hard because it's hard to get this back on. I mean, you could have your globe looking like this. Nobody wants their snow globe to look like that. So the easiest way to do it, if you're using the die, then punch your die out. And then you can just lay this right inside. But lay it on here exactly where you want it to go and kind of drop it and just make sure it's like nice and round again that's why if you're doing your die you can just lay it right inside that die and you know it's exactly where you want it to be so just put that in there and take my base off probably got my hands dirty and then just carefully pick it back up You want to make sure your stamp is clean before you do that. Now it's on here, and instead of you trying to lay it on here nice and round, you picked it up nice and round. And you also know that it's going to meet the bottom of your base. Because a lot of people have a hard time making sure that it's, when they get it on the stamp and they go to stamp it, it doesn't meet the bottom. But you know it's going to. And you could also use your stamp apparatus, which I'm using it for the camo in this card, so it's not like I couldn't have. But I wanted to show you that tip in case you don't have the stamp apparatus. Now you can see it's on here and it's meeting the bottom and it's still nice and round and it's kept its shape. So we've got the snow globe now. I'm going to put the tree inside. You can't get all of the pieces. You have to be very selective on what goes inside your snow globe. So I'm going to go for the tree. And then there's balloons. There's a bunch of different animals, but you know, the Aussie in me wants to go for the koala. Hopefully I'll get this because I'm not putting my head right over the top. It's the hardest thing about doing videos. So now we've got this. And then I just have this scrap piece here where I just kind of wanted the kangaroo because I wanted to go for the whole Aussie theme, but you know, we're not because it made my card be off. It needed to be more centered. So I grabbed the giraffe because he faces the other direction, but you also have an elephant and there's some birds and there's balloons. So there's other things in this set as well. And then I just have them both on the same block so I can stamp ones. There we go. And it is like a million degrees of humidity here in Indiana. So I'm just going to set those aside and let those dry while we do our stamparatus. There are also a lot of words in here, which you could put on the inside. Um, and there's some grass. I'm not going to use any of that for this. You could put them on the inside, but just to save time on this card, I'm not going to. So I have my camo on my stamparatus because that's how it is the last time I used it. I don't remember. Oh, I did the card that matched my shirt. The very first day that I got my order. That was the first card. I'm going to just lay this in where I can tell that it's gonna match. It just needs to be covered. The nice thing about the camo is it doesn't need to be straight. And the magnet on the background stamps, you have to, I've had some people tell me on the last time I did this that you can cut your paper bigger and get the magnet to fit, and you can, except for the fact that the shimmery white cardstock is not cheap. Um, and so to cut it larger than a quarter sheet just to have the room for the magnet, it doesn't bother me. I don't care that I'm going to have to have no magnet. Sometimes I will stick a little piece of adhesive. I'm not going to even do that. We're just going to go for the one stamp and know that it's going to be good. I should put a piece, a piece of scrap paper in here, though, because this is going to be all over the back of my thing, so I will do that. 
and we know, I know from my card design that I mostly need the outside. It doesn't matter so much if the inside of my thing. In the Zoo Globe, the Safari class, you also get ink spots with every in color, which would be nice for this. My refills aren't here yet. So let's stick this in here. I'll hold that with it. Make sure again that that's going to cover it. It is. And then just press them. Again, I know it's the outside of this card that needs to have all of the ink. And the um, magenta is such a bright color, so that's why I know it, one time of it's going to be fine. Oops. Well, you know, I spoke too soon. But it did stick. So let's see if I can get it again. Just press right here. Perfect. So now we have our camo. And now let's watercolor these little fun things in. I'm not gonna do the, I'm gonna do them all, but I'm gonna just show you part of it. <clears throat> so I pulled out my watercolor pencils. And if you've watched me watercolor with pencils before, you know I like a really heavy, a heavy coat of the pencil. So color hard and use more than one color on everything. So here I have my Granny Apple Green. I will do a couple things and then I will color the rest and then I'll come back and show you before I paint with them. So I have the Granny Apple Green and then I'm gonna take Garden Green which could stand to be sharpened. And this one's getting a, a tad bit shorter because I color hard with my pencils, so they do need to be sharpened more. But our watercolor pencils are one of our most inexpensive coloring eye tools, and I've had them for years. And I use them hard, and I use them all the time. So it's not even like a blend that's $4 each, or four fifty each, or however, $9 for two. I mean, for $9, you get like almost 16 colors of these. So I've got that. And then I will do the base because the base I had a lot of fun with. That's where I wanted to, we don't have a magenta one because these have been around longer than that. So I just wanted it to be really colorful. So let's take some Bermuda Bay and go around here. I was kind of going for the little iridescent look that you get. Some Coastal Cabana. Kind of overlap those. And some gorgeous scrape. And if you press really hard, then when you go to watercolor, there's a lot of lead on here for it to mush around. And then we, I'm gonna put a little bit of this over here so as it turns the corner, you get again. The, and some Melon Mamba, which is the closest thing that we have in the color line to magenta but it's not nearly as bright. It's a pretty pink, but it doesn't have that beautiful bright. And then um, some Pacific Point. Kind of add that in just to get a little bit of highlight. Okay, so I'm gonna color these and then after I've colored, I will be able to fast forward, cut that part out of the video and I'll be back with you. Okay, so you can see I've colored these in. Everything except for my baby Joey has two colors, at least. Some of them have more. <clears throat> so here are our new water painters. They come with three tips. I'm going to use mostly the tiniest tip. I may go over, actually I'll use, this is the medium tip. So they've already been filled with water. You just make sure there's a little, you just need a tiny bit of water for this. So there's a little bit coming out. I've added a tiny bit of gray. This is one of the places where there is one, just to kind of give the edges of the water, the snow globe, the water globe. It's not really snow. I guess they call them snow globes when they're 
filled with it. So that just gives it a little bit of shade there. And then maybe I'll do use the big one for down here. So on these, you can see when you've got that much lead on there, as soon as you hit it with that teeny bit of water, it just starts blending it. So I'm going to color these and I will come back. I will eventually put on Instagram where I cut this out of these videos, often on Instagram, in a week or so after they post on YouTube, I put them over on Instagram, only this coloring part. <clears throat> and it's all sped up so you can see how I colored it in fast version. Okay, so I'm back and I did switch after I did this and this, I switched the tiny tip. So they're all colored. This one I'm gonna leave full and I'm gonna cut these two, these two out, just fussy cut them. So after I do that, I will fast forward this bit because nobody wants me to, well, nobody wants to watch this, but they're real quick. There are no dyes for these, but they, they cut out really quickly. Okay, I'm back with these. I did want to mention that if you watched this video of me doing this, this was Memento Ink. And today I use Memento Ink, and it's actually more humid in Indiana than it was the day that I did this. It's <clears throat> really muggy out there. But on the shimmery white cardstock, the ink doesn't sink, sink down so much. I don't know. And I try not to touch the edges, but it, do, it doesn't bleed. I don't know why sometimes it bleeds and why sometimes it doesn't. So here's this where... Um, I thought maybe that was going to look messy where I kind of overstamped it, but I think it looks fine. So, you know, I don't like, I just don't like to waste the shimmery cardstock having the extra for the magnet. And I could have taped it, but it, in the end, it worked out okay. So now we just have to stick all this together. So I'm going to get my new seal. Flip this over. The nice thing about the um, water painters is they use su such a little amount of water that they're already dry. over here and then we're gonna stick this on here and you can kind of mess with it because the camo shows in different patterns so this looks the nicest you can see there's more pink here and this way there's more white which kind of is a better overall camo effect I'm loving the new adhesive love 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 it so put that there and then I've got two of the new ribbons. This one is from the Playful Pets, which that card in the Try It class, adorable. I love it. I'm going to do some other cards with these things, but you know, now I've, I've used 10 of the new things, nine. I have one left to do. Well, no, because it's the world map and I've already used it. So, so much fun, that new stuff. And then this is the magenta in color ribbon. So just pull them together and pull it around. Cut some off. I love the Playful Pets braided cord. It's fun for this card too. It has a, a real kid, bright, circus, that kind of feel to it. Just bring them around. It's just going to be a simple bow. So pull them there. You can see that fun um, rainbow effect on the base of the snow globe, even though we don't have a magenta watercolor crayon. Don't let it stop you from using anything with the end colors because a lot of times like the curry is a, a version of bumblebee lighter or darker and they um I don't know if we have spruce but with a lot of the colors like cinnamon you can make it one of the browns you can get them control how dark they are. So just turn the ends of this. You don't want the bow on this to be have giant Danglies because we're gonna glue those other two animals on the bottom. Get her super, super pretty hot pink magenta. I did get ink on that somehow, but it's gonna get covered up. 
You can tell I laid the stamp on it. Look how fun that is, super bright. And I mean, you could just have the one animal in there. You can fit a couple more animals if you don't put the tree, but obviously the koala needs the tree. adhesive to our little guys down here. And we're good. How sweet is that? Super, super easy. It doesn't look hardly any different than the first one I did. I did space my ribbon out a little bit better on the first one so you could see all that cute cord. So I hope you like that. If you're interested in any in any of the classes, I will say that it looks like that as this dries over time, it gets a little bit more of the hot pink, which this is the color of the light magenta blend. This one looks like it is. I'll compare it once it's set and dried for a little bit because I didn't I used a friend's pad to do this one, so they are a little bit different. But if you're interested in any of the classes, then click the links that are down underneath the video or over on Facebook or in the email, wherever you're watching this on my website, everything will be there. So, and always underneath the video, if you're watching on YouTube are the links to my website. But if you're on my email list, then you pretty much get an update a couple times a week on what's going on. So everybody have a great day. Oh, I did want to point out one thing. When I stamped him, the first on this one, I totally messed it up and I didn't want to waste the shimmery white cardstock. So I just stamped him again and then cut him out. So he's a little 3D over here, which I kind of like. He's kind of cute 3D, but I didn't want to cut another thing out. So everybody have a great day. Bye.